Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Star Ladder China playoffs continue right now. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit, and we'll be bringing you what it will be an elimination match. It's Hyper Glory Team versus Lie Gaming. Best of three. This is your game one. And of course, the winner of the series stays alive. The loser goes home and has no chance to go to Kiev. One of the two, uh, I guess we look at the playoff bracket, and the only thing to say is that both of these teams are really underdogs going to the group stage. The two big names that did not make it to the playoffs are LGD China with their star-studded roster that's failed to achieve results, and of course, Invictus Gaming, who was tied with Lie Gaming at the end of the group or at the end of the group stage, but still ended up falling short in the end when it came to the head-to-head -head matchup tiebreaker. So with that said, uh, I'm joined here today by Winter. Winter, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I see Death Professor and Brew on the same team, and they actually ban out the Tusk as well. So the they don't have the pesky slow for the Brew ultimate. Yeah, that, that sigil has been pretty good against the Bruce Blood in general, I feel. Um, yeah, we've seen some Tuskar support, but... And actually, HGT have run this in general, not just against Brewmaster, so... Yeah, they value him as a very good support hero. They like to like they like to try lane mid is what I would call it. <laughs> Wisp Tuscar dual lane just constant or not dual lane, uh, ganking duo just constantly rotating on the mid lane. Uh, they'll go for a lot of smoke ganks even if they run the uh, even if they run more of a defensive trying to start like they're just very active around the map with that hero. But well, it won't be available to them winter. So overall, looking at the draft, we see HGT with some good minus armor for Roshan, just kind of a well rounded opening, and uh, Lie Gaming will be the first ones to. Do something a little bit different. They'll go for a Disruptor, a hero that we have not seen that much of recently. Obviously, Static Storm is really good against Tidehunter's ultimate. Uh, I'm guessing that's the main reason that they're picking him up. Yeah, he's just uh, for the team fight presence, and he's very good at zoning off laners with his lightning early on. Deals a lot of damage. But I'm hoping that HGT will go for like a core like Bristolback, so they have Bristolback tight and Viper, so they can actually fight very well against the... Bristolback is very good against Brewmaster split. You kill the Brewlings very fast, and he's tanky versus the Death Prophet, as long as you're not facing the Death Prophet. An Earthshaker. So, yeah, it's a team fight heavy game, man. We're seeing Exorcism, Brew Split, Disruptor Ult, Shaman Wards, Tidal, obviously the Earthshaker's AoE combination. I, I, we could see some good clashes here. I'm, I'm kind of, it's it's kind of a repetitive draft in terms of we see a lot of these heroes, but it's got a little more of a team fight focus. So I'm, I'm hoping we get some big clashes. Yeah, this two draft is like you think you think you want to fight, I want to fight too. So everyone just picks clash heavy heroes, and no one's gonna pick any any sort of carry. Everyone is just gonna be focusing on winning a fight and taking objectives. That's been like Wild. very repetitive since uh you know. Since since TI, everyone has been doing more or less the same thing. With diff maybe a little bit of different heroes here and there. Lion's the pick for Lie Gaming now. So they get some burst damage. Didn't no wasn't a game where they really needed the hex. I mean it's nice, obviously, always, but there's not like that one hero like a storm that's like, oh crap, we don't have lockdown. Uh, maybe just protecting against that type of a hero. The one hero HGT has run a lot of is actually ZSMJ's Ember Spirit. So I'm wondering if Lie Gaming are a bit worried that could be a last pick and just kind of want to protect their draft against that possibility. Mm. Yeah, Lion's pretty good. I mean, Lion and Disruptor, both the supports are very, very good against Ember already. So And they have Silence from Death of I don't think they'll be worried. I mean, they have three heroes that can deal with the Ember very well. Yeah, so HGT, at this point, probably not going that direction, but... I'm wondering if Lie Gamer are thinking about that when they went for the Lion. Hmm. HGT, what are they going to go for here, do you think, Winter? I think they probably wanted the Lion just for, like, you know, disable someone to initiate and and set up stuff. But for HGT, okay, they, they went for the TA, so it's just, uh, like, a, abuse the Roshan lineup. Uh, I mean, the side, the Roshan on their side with the minus armor. And TA is fairly good against DP in the lane as well, 1v1. You can deal a lot of damage early on towards the DP, and mainly it's like the DP can't really do much to you. TA will free farm in a lane against DP. Yeah, there is Exorcism and Static Storm later on, so this TA's Refraction will not be that useful in team fights. but uh, with that said, in, in the lightning stage should go pretty well, and Lion Gaming will round it out with the Bristleback. So they get another frontline tank, 
And they, they get a hero that is just generally difficult to burst down. Doesn't match up that great against the Viper, but uh, should be annoying for ZSMJ to focus in these fights. He doesn't need like to do damage, I think. He's just there for the DP so that the DP can actually do damage without being focused. Since if you run in with the Bristleback and the Brule, the enemy has to like sort of scatter and just be, careful, be very careful against the Brule speed and the Bristleback. They have to stay away from you and that gives a lot of space for DP to just use her ultimate to deal damage. Winter, who do you favor? Draft's complete. If you had to pick a uh, team. I, I think that DP and Brew together in one team is very scary. Yeah, so you're, you're going but, you're going with the exorcism here. Yeah, but at the same time, HGT have like very good lineup to take Roshan with the Shaman and the TA. So, like both lineups will be like the, it's uh, both sides can win. I, I feel whoever makes a mistake will lose. But I, I like Lie Gaming's lineup more just because. That's, just, that's always just, true. What do you mean? Yeah, like, Dover DP and Bru mistakes will lose. You're not... Yeah. Come okay, on, DP and Bru Okay, DP and Brew together, it just, you know... Just very scary. Since DP just needs, like, someone to tank in front, and, like, I feel it's sort of similar to Puck and Lycan together on one team. DP and Brew is very potent together on the same team as well. Okay. That, there you go. There you go. So, you're, 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 t you're picking a team here, not whoever makes less mistakes Man. will win. <laughs> I, I don't want to pick a team, but you're making me pick a team. Then <laughs> you gotta make the spicy winter. Come on now. It's I haven't had my coffee or anything, man. I I need a little energy in the cast. So, well, with that said, I'm going with HGT just to be contrary. <laughs> We've got Kaka playing the Viper. S will be handling your Shadow Shaman. Pretty Hall will be on the Earthshaker. Has plays an excellent Murano. We've seen a lot from him earlier in the the group stage. ZSMJ will be your Templar Assassin. And that does leave Icy as the offlane tide, and on the Radiant side, Lie Gaming, they're setting up for the backstab here. It used to be that this is something the Dire Squad would do, but with the new Creepy Equilibrium, it's really a Radiant trick nowadays in this top lane. We've got 5400 on the line, Super on the Disruptor, XTT, the offensive trialing Brewmaster, that will put XDD into the mid lane as the Bristleback, and last but not least, XZ will be handling the Death Prophet. Mm, I like how they distributed their lanes too. They have the Bristleback middle against the TA since DP will have... Uh, you can't really pressure the TA and Bristleback bottom versus Tide is not very good. Like a melee versus Tide, so they have the DP versus the Tide and the Bristleback versus the TA instead. Hmm. Do, do you like... I haven't, I haven't actually seen this matchup with Bristle versus TA. Ah, uh, yeah, me too, but uh, at least I, I feel if on paper it feels better than against the Tide though. Because melee against Tide is really bad. Yeah. At the same time, like, Bristleback does have quills, but that's not really, like, you can't just con- I guess with a bottle you can spam them a lot, but it's also going to give TA constant mana for refraction, so. I'm not- I'm not sure if this is really going to go the Bristleback's way after the early levels, but I guess we'll find out. I'm just going to wait and, and see who does I, better. I think he should be able to farm, like, fairly, like, not under too much pressure against the TA. He can just keep spamming quills in the lane to last hit, and I don't think he'll be able to, like, just stop the TA from farming, but he would be able to get his own farm at the same time. Yeah, the, the trap top lane was not sprung in the end, as HGT yeah, was just it's quite obvious. It. It's quite obvious, like, because the Brew was totally, like, when you see an off laner running up to the lane and taking last hit without, like, he wasn't afraid at all, and you can't see the supports at bottom, you know what's up. Yeah, and it's also so, just like, the fact that we see the Brew off lane in the first place, right? Like, if you wanted to just run a solo off laner, you'd probably put the Bristle back there, so... I feel that yeah, might you be would the want, other reason. You want to give the Brew a quick dagger, first. otherwise you wouldn't do the lanings that way. But here comes the smoke meter. Super. Does the Bristol have a slow? No, he uh, doesn't have slow yet. Points are good, but they're going to go in now. The Hex will be there to start this off, but they don't have an Impale follow-up. CSMJ, no mana. Oh, he's bottling up, though. He's close to Refraction. He's very close. He's going to get it off in time. Yeah, he'll live. Yeah. He was like one CS away from level 3. One or two CS. Maybe probably should have waited for that so that he can actually get one point in the goo for that kill. Yeah, if they had goo, that, that would have probably been a kill. And well, Mace did smoke opportunity here from Light Gaming. This now means that they're leaving their, their Blink Dagger builder in the off lane, and uh, they, I guess they could stack Ancients here for the Bristleback to farm, but Brew doesn't really have that comeback mechanic. He doesn't clear Ancients, so maybe they'll stack the big camps instead for him. Yeah, Brew as an offlaner, he needs sort of some sort of help. Either oh, Winter, by a... the way, uh, make sure you turn on your in-game mic. Yep, I already had that on. 
Okay, can you maybe try toggling it? Because some people are saying they can't hear you. It's all the way to the left. Okay. Know. Yeah, just try turning it like off and on again, maybe. Okay. Uh, sure. Anyway, sorry about that. It's uh, It sounds like it might not be on Winter's End, so if you're having trouble hearing him, uh, you may want to try just restarting your Dota 2 client. But with that said, there'll be a jump here on top lane on XTT. Fissure can follow this up, and it will. Now the Viper gets in range for Poison Tank, and it's a perfect block, actually. Oh, XTT's in uh, trouble now. Body blocked by Pretty Hall. The evasion's not going to be enough here for him, although he's trying, but yeah, first blood. Really well executed by XTT. Yeah, that was, that was a really good fissure block. Like, the buff, the old fissure probably wouldn't have enough range to block the whole ramp. That was a really long block. Yeah, but Bru needs, like, like you mentioned, he needs some sort of space to farm later as an well, offlane, because he doesn't clear jungle fast, he doesn't do ancients. He will basically rely on his team to either you take towers or fight as spy with his ultimate and get go from there. As an offlaner he doesn't he's tanky but he doesn't really catch up well as an offlane. Yeah, and you really want that quick level six, which in good news for Lie Gaming, XTT is still getting his levels here. He's level four already, so pretty much in fact he's leading in experience compared to the Bristol back, it says so like by like a CS or something. So that's good. But yeah, overall, uh, we're gonna see I see getting a lot out of his offlane on the Tidehunter and um, end of the day, you look at this mid lane, Bristleback is farming well. XTD actually holding his own against CSMJ, so... Yeah, it seems the Bristleback is... I, I mean, it's not shutting down TA, which is generally what you look for out of here as they go against her mid, but... He's also not dying, which is which is certainly something. Yeah, I mean, he got help from his team, though, to be fair. Like, that gang, even though they didn't kill the TA, but the TA was forced to use up all the bottle charge and every re bit of regen he had and he had to bottle close so the BB Bristleback basically had like a li easy time after that gank which didn't succeed Alright, so he's getting harassed out a bit, Super does have a... Nah, he's not gonna bother They even rotated in the Death Prophet for this, who's now missing uh, some CS under tower Yeah, I thought they'd go for the glimpse there but decided they didn't have enough damage to bring down Icy mm, yeah. yeah No points in Kinetic Field either And meanwhile the Spoke bit S will walk in, and so they have traps. No traps just yet, so they might have to wrap around for this. Yeah, they need to go around for this. We get a fissure block on the ramp. Probably be their best option. Otherwise, they need to either fissure first, and then the shaman runs in to play, cast the shackles on the bristleback. Yeah, at the same time, if he turns just with bristleback and just runs away... Yeah, this is not an easy kill. It's quite difficult for them to get, if they want to try. Yeah, no haste on TA, there's no double damage yeah. room. And Earthshaker is running all the way bottom to help defend the lane. I mean, this is an important move as a support. When the enemy is pressuring your offlaner's lane with a, with, with a push towards the tower, the, the support as like an Earthshaker should always rotate over to give uh, the offlaner a hand. This is not going to deter XZ though. He just keeps on pounding into this tier 1 bottom and he yeah, even moves but, forward. But at least if the Earthshaker is here, the tide is like, okay, I can get... I can get the XP. Otherwise, it'll be three versus one. Even he can't defend the tower. He's not going to get experience because they can zone him up without the Earthshaker there. But with the Earthshaker there, at least he got some experience. Okay. That's that's definitely a good point. As XDD will head to the top room, and S will be waiting for him. There's actually a TA trap here. He'll be shackled uh, up, but uh, they don't uh, have no, much follow up. This might go He's against S. Die, Two yeah. auto attacks and one quill will kill him off. But the fissure comes out. Trap. We'll connect, and they're going to body block here with Pretty Hall. Nicely done. They need probably two meld strikes, they as well as a bunch kill. of auto attacks. Uh, they can't get this and XDD game. is even going in on the Kerr. He's like, well, I'm not afraid of you guys. Meld. Uh, it's only a level one meld. he's still chasing him. He's, oh, is he he's, he's oh, really committed to this kill. He, Winter, he he's going in. He does have the phase boots, but yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't, I don't think you can chase, uh, because the BB is still moving fast from the ultimate. Yeah, that was a three hero commitment, and Bristleback just kind of shrugs it off. And now they'll TP in top lane. XTT has his ultimate as Lion worms his way into the oh, tree line. Oh, he's but... baited this one, but they're kiting him nicely. There's your impale. Bruce Blitt will come through. They didn't get off a clap first. They're just going to go straight into a boulder toss. Cyclone can hunt for the Shadow Shaman. Not really being microed that well, but we'll now head I, up towards he, the jungle. He did not have enough mana for the clap plus the ultimate. Cyclone? He can only, yeah, he can only choose one of that. Well, he Cyclones in, but too low HP to, and out of mana to go in. Yeah, he's at 1.5k now, so if he really wants to get the dagger like right away, he will have the dagger in like one or like two minutes or three minutes if he doesn't get anything else, and that will sync with his next cooldown on the ultimate, if he wants to rush the dagger. 
And so Ligamy now will push out the bottom lane for XC. He's sitting on some, I think it's a, some items coming out now. Yeah, Bracer, Magic Wand, Yule Scepter on the way. Nothing too exciting. And overall for Lie Gaming, I guess at this point the key thing is they just need to get level 6 on these supports. Your Disruptor doesn't have his ultimate yet, and your Lion doesn't have his Finger of Death. Pretty important ultimates for both Yeah, heroes. same goes to HGT. They want to get levels on Shaman. Like, oh, Shaker doesn't really care if he gets levels or not. He just wants to be able to either make a difference with a kill or a save on a, on a teammate. And they're probably just waiting for the time where they can just go for Roshan with the TA and maybe the mech on the Wiper, which is coming soon. These, these are usually the stuff they just want to wait and just go for a fight after that and take Roshan. ZSMJ so can't get the bottom rune. It's actually an Invis and Ally Gaming will pick it up. So instead, he's going to just Bottle Crow and continue farming the mid lane. And the one thing that Ally Gaming do have to keep their eyes on Winter is this Roshan. You've got a TA and a Tide on the same team. Yeah, Not to mention the they... Shaman. They need to keep an eye at the same time, but sometimes you just, even though if you know the enemy is doing the rush, but the lineup doesn't allow you, I mean, the lineup, your lineup can't really go to the rush pit and fight sometimes, but with Lion Gaming's lineup, if they have ultimate like you mentioned on the Lion, especially the Disruptor, they can potentially take a fight at the rush pit and top lane, they're going to TP in the Bristol back to defend the tower. Shaman not 6th level yet. They'll take their second tower of the game bottom lane, XC. Didn't even need Exorcism to finish that off as it's currently yeah, cooling down. It's like 30 seconds, he's probably going to use it on the middle lane. Yeah, and this is all just not with a bang, but with a whimper from HGT. They're not really putting up much of a fight. They have Ravage now. T and I guess this does go back to the TA pick in some ways. She's just not really the best hero to directly fight the death ball. She's much more effective at finding the pickoffs, sneaking a Roshan, split pushing. But the death ball is coming, Winter. It's coming soon. Disruptor, not yet level 6. Lion, not yet level 6, but... They've almost got their mech here on XDD. The Brewmaster has his blink, and Death Prophet is working towards the Yule. So, why game may just look to pick a fight anyway. Yeah, top lane, they're gonna try to go for the Bristol back, but that's gonna be a ward just spotting them out. But, like you mentioned, like the TA, the TA excels at all the other stuff, but doing a direct fight with TA depends on what items the TA have. Like, for this game, going up, he absolutely needs a BKB if he wants to go for the face rush fight, but at the same time BKB doesn't mean he's invulnerable. He still takes a lot of damage from the Brule, Brulings and the DP ultimate and the Bristol back as well, but he needs it against the Disruptor and Lion. Top lane, they're gonna go in with the blink. The, the Fissure actually keeping the Lion away here, but he'll manually path forward, gets uh, off that Impale, and she's dead. Kaka will go down. Looking for a second hero, they've matched the Cyclone up one behind the tower, or in front of the tower, I should say. No one's TPing to help. Boulder Toss comes through. The follow-up from the Bristleback is here, but Icy's arrived now. He's got Ravage. He can hit this one on two. Maybe on three if the tide's not, or if the line's not careful. Still Icy holding the Ravage as XDD and XTT continue to retreat. He decides he couldn't get any kills and just doesn't even bother. Hmm. I was surprised actually the TA, the TA had a teleport score. If he actually teleported as well, then the tide would have been pro probably comfortable with letting the Ravage go since there's one more teammate arriving. But because there was no one coming in, like, he was like, nah, I'm not going to use my Ravage, I, can't <laughs> I need more backup. Yeah, he maybe could have killed one. I think the, the panda yeah, was getting he, hit by the tower. The, if the TA came in and he used his Ravage, I think, yeah, they'll probably kill the panda at least. Yeah, Lion might have gotten caught just because he's got such low HP and armor and move speed. But... Yeah, but he was far behind. Yeah. That, that was a huge difference for him. And they'll TP Super out towards the middle lane now. All level 6 is online except for 5400. Who's about to get his? They don't have a Brew split though. Exorcism is up. And XC. He'll make his move now. Out come the ghosts. And... They, still, they still have like Ravage, but the tight teleporter top. So this tower has to be sack, I think. I There's know. static sure store. There's also Glimpse available. Oh, the, the, the tight TP is already ready. Yeah, nobody's TP'd and gotten caught out yet. Pretty Hawk oh, going in with the Fissure. I see. No, he's not going to be set back. They're actually going to chase out the oh, uh, Shaker to the He was on cooldown. He was on cooldown, that's why. Okay. Yeah, he couldn't get he couldn't get vision of the first tier of the TP in either. That's hiding behind the tree line. But they're still just forcing Icy off this tower rather rapidly. No blink dagger on the tide yet. Uh, the DPL will end. Is done. They'll begin to chase. XDD into the front lines. He's not doesn't have his mech complete just yet. Static Storm will come through. That catches out too. The Shaman as well as the Viper. No Shaman wards for this fight. The Ravage was decent to turn. XDD will end up going down here, but meanwhile the the Viper nearly finished off. They couldn't actually kill him. He'll be impaled again. They're gonna lose at least one more. Possibly two. 5400 gets chunked. 
XZ will be kept alive and well, they'll lose XTT here as well. It looks like heads down the south in the ramp, but oh, there's blink. two to Five chase seconds. him. Oh, he can splash. He can split. His splits actually cool down this fight as last song. Cycloning the TA up in the air, but the anchor smash is just completely the countering these burst split. Shaman is keeping that ink. And now another boulder toss, securing the kill on the Tidehunter as XZ will try to chase out ZSMJ. Wards get dropped. Super gets hexed. Glimpse was not used. He couldn't get the vision for it. He gets killed off. That's an ultra kill for ZSMJ in this fight. It was just too spread out to get the notification. He runs back in. Fingered. Will end up going down. That ends his dominating streak. And XTD oh, picks up two more kills. The mech was late. He couldn't arrive on time to actually save the Shaman. Shaman dies once more. But in that fight, uh, I think they actually lost in total four heroes. And no, actually five, I think. In total, five heroes in total. Yeah, they they lost five, and they also gave TA four kills. Like they ended their streak, but they still gave TA four kills. Not too sure who actually got more of that. The Death Prophet is continuing to get farmed. XC nearly has a Yule Scepter. So... Yeah, that's that's like the huge plus. He didn't die the whole fight. Yeah, he didn't get the ultra kill, but he also didn't give up a big bounty either. And end of the day, they have Exorcism ready to go if he can get the mana for it. Although he's still 50 short. Yeah, so. Ravage is not off cooldown yet, so this tower should probably be gone. No Shaman wants no Ravage. They can't, they can't take this fight. They need to just wait for the cooldowns. And they'll smoke immediately in the river. It's... Yeah, they are much stronger right now. They are much, much stronger right now in, in this situation. And they're just heading towards top. And HGT knows that. If they see more heroes at top, they can actually just go for the rush. There's a double damage to help their cost. There's a ward spotting that rune, so a ZSMJ could be like, okay, I have DD, let's go rush, we can't defend at top. It's a very common trade-off for Dire side. Yeah, and the other thing here is that Bristleback now has his mech. He did not in the initial fight mid. And they get the Yule Scepter on the Death Prophet, so yeah, I'm actually surprised items. they are not actually running to the rush yet. They have vision of the double damage. Yeah, they have a TA, a Tide, a Shaman. And, and Seems like an obvious wards. move. Yeah. You can't contest if you're live gaming right now. They go They're going to find the TA mid. Glimpse can be thrown out. Kinetic Field's there. Static Storm is going to remove Refraction. CSMJ, though, tries for the TP out. Clap, and he gets wow. out. Wow, that was, great, that was great really, game sense there by That was CSMJ. really clutch. Like, he would only die if the DP popped ultimate. That's all. Because the U setter was down and the Glimpse was down. No, no stuff to cancel his DP. No, that was really good game sense. Yeah. That was very, very good. The only other hero that really is a stun is the lion, and he wasn't there. CSMJ sort of a, showing those yeah. wily veteran instincts. Oh, Panda's ultimate. They go no, straight for the backstab here, jumping on directly into Kaka. The Bruce but will be used in time. Ty not able to ravage to prevent this, and so they focus on the Viper. They'll finish him off. Now they look for ZSMJ. Another boulder toss would probably be enough to kill him, but I guess they're worried about XC getting in an awkward position. So Icy's the one they go for. They drop him back down for the Cyclone. Ghost continuing to chew through him, and they'll kill him off. Earthshaker, even with the double damage ring, just can't find the kill. Now blink and clap and smack down by the Brew. He'll end up falling as well. They've lost three. The Shaman did get a tower bottom lane though. The tier two drops there. They so got three for two one. towers. They got two towers actually, like the tier one plus. Then they teleport back to defend, and the Shaman plays the wards at the tier two. And they so can, they, actually... they might be able to go Roche right now, just with the, if they just sneak in. Uh, actually, they don't, they, they don't have wards. They don't have wards. I don't think they can do it fast enough though. They can do it, but it takes too long. That's tier one for light gaming and middle lane. It's too risky for them at the moment. Yeah, I was I was actually forgetting they didn't have wards as well. Without that, yeah. it takes a lot longer. I still I still feel even though they lost that fight three to two, they actually got a better trade. They took two towers at bottom, and they defended their tier two. I think that was pretty good for HGT already. Yeah, and I'm also it, the only concern for me though is if they lose this tier two mid. Like when they if they lose that tower in the next push from Lai, which you know is coming, it's only a matter of time. Then they're, they're, we've been talking a lot about how HTT can sneak Roche, but they're probably not going to sneak it with that tower down. Yeah, and Lion Gaming is coming with the smoke at the moment. Panda ultimate is 25 seconds, DP is 17. They just want to take the t tower. ZSMJ has BKB. It will only help him so much against all the physical damage on DP and... Not to mention that Hex. And they're at least going to force out the BKB now. Caught in the kinetic field, and he can BKB and run uh, out of this if he needs to. But he's going to have to do it soon because Hex is coming. No, didn't get the hex off. Just he's went for the holding impel. it back really well, though. I mean, it's really good that he saved the the BKB. Once he popped the BKB, they can't defend the tower. Yeah, it's not even about like losing the 10 second charge. It's just having a cooldown when the fight begins. 
Yeah, this is still a hard fight to defend. Oh, here and they're just gonna zone them out with the split. They'll just go in on Kaka with this. Cyclone the Brew up into the air. This forces the wards out, but they're not really in the best position. Pretty far behind enemy lines. ZSFJ BKBs focuses on the, the Death Prophet, but will Yules herself up in the air as ZSFJ is forced to retreat. The Brew split continuing to zone these heroes out, but he might go down. He's gotta blink out quickly. Oh, he's just... Well, no, he's still got his blink off. Oh. Surrounded by five heroes. Can't believe that happened. Clapson ends up going down. Icy still holding his Ravage. Will now let him fly. Hits on four. Static Storm not enough to finish those CSMJ, but the finger of death from 5400 is. And with that, with those CSMJ in the picture, maybe this Bristleback could just do the work for them. Uh, oh, we'll yeah. see. He's tanking up. He's charging in. He's smacking us. One more Quill Spray. We'll finish him off. Might call off the Viper as well. XDD going hard in the base. It'll be a triple kill for the Death Prophet. An ultra kill for XZ. But most of the work was actually the Bristle Man. The boss is back in the house. The raid boss. You know that fight? They actually had two things that didn't went well correctly for them. They there was they were like one creep away from the Earthshaker getting his level six. He would have killed like two heroes with his ultimate. Oh my god, he's and, just and, level and the, six the, now. Yeah, the the Fissure was also blocking the tide from getting he ravaged four heroes, but he couldn't get anchor smash on all the all the heroes because the Fissure was blocking him. If yeah. those two stuff didn't actually Happen, they would have probably annihilated the peop the two supports right away from the Ravage and Echo Slam, but too bad. That is unfortunate, and it gives more farm into the pockets of Lie Gaming. When you're up against a TA, especially, you just want to live through that initial burst, and I think they can now in pretty much all their heroes. The Agon yeah. Scepter's now up on the Brew. The Bristlebacks picked up a Sanjin Yasha just about to go with his mech, and even the Death Prophet is the Yules, now a point booster, working towards that. Bloodstone, Bloodstone build, so yeah, yeah we're gonna see yeah. very tanky cores in general. Bl Bl Bloodstone is usually when you're having a really, really good game, then you go for Bloodstone because you're gonna get a lot of charge and you'll be very strong later. In a mediocre game, you go for hard in this situation, but this game is going very well for line gaming. Yeah, obviously, it's not really the the best item in general. Death Prophet normally doesn't have tons of mana issues. It's not like you're. Mm -hmm. It's not as natural fit as like Storm. But oh, games. they find pretty hot. And blinking onto the high ground above him is 5400, but he, he gets counter hexed by the shaman who's waiting. Still, it won't matter. With the impale from 5400, the clap from the brew, they will end up getting the kill. Yeah, this game is slowly slipping away from them. I mean, it's just those style of lineups when whoever loses the fight just straight out loses the game with this sort of draft. Yeah, well, well Winter, aren't you glad that you very confidently said Lie Gaming would take this game one? Very confidently. Man, it's DP and Ru. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. And they also, they just don't really have like the best lineup to stop the Bruce split either. You know, yeah. they're running a Shaman, but he's only just now picked up his Blink Dagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel there was like one thing they could have maybe done better. There, there was like when Lion Gaming actually pushed the top tier one, and they could have gone, gone Rosh with the double damage rune as well. I think that was the only thing that were missing in this game. Like, and they did the play 5400 will just play directly oh. in, but there's a little surprise waiting for him. It's the TA with a BKB. Still does the SMJ's BKB early just to kill off that lion, and now we'll be forced back. XDD is not even afraid of this TA, has a haste run up, can be getting the chaser. Icy's also getting zoned out by the bristle boss, just charging in on the TA. They'll clap in on ZSMJ as well, has no refraction, just gets auto attack down. Man, normally it's TA who's the one getting aggressive, but. This bristleback is out of control. Six one and eight. Yeah. I was I was thinking HGT should actually grab the bristleback, but I get me actually gone for it. And here comes the panda again. But they just one. echo slam to try and stop his split, and he just casually tanks it, and then and then his team takes the edges. That's a fast you, bloodstone, like yeah, a Yule's just, bloodstone uh, at twenty one minutes. Jesus. Oh my God, he's I mean, he's so just farm. very he's very fun, but. I'm thinking how can they actually win a fight? What are they? What should they do? They need to focus on the DP and the Brew, but the Brew will almost certainly get his ultimate off. Even if they drop like, for example, they blink with the Shaman and Hex drop bots on him, follow up with the Fissure and Ravage, it would need like the other supports like the Disruptor to be disabled at the same time for them to be able to take down the Brew right, like, from full health. I'm, I'm also, like, the bruise is very important, obviously, but I'm actually worried about XDD as well. You've got two melee heroes, a TA, and a Shaman. Like, none of, neither, 
Neither of which have particularly great yeah, range in fights. The, the Bristol back can kill the Shaman like three hits, like maybe even two. Like maybe with one slow stack on him or two slow stacks. The only right the only answer for him is going to be the Viper Strike. Like they have to reserve it for him, I would say. Yeah, but it's very hard for them to like. They need to land all their spells so well to kill even just one guy. Wow, XC. He just exorcism trying to kill off the Shaman, but didn't Yules before it, so the Shaman just blinked away. So, a bit of a misplay there from him, uh, popping the exorcism rather early. It's already halfway down, but he'll just charge yeah, up to the high ground. Use it to at least hit the tower. A few times. There's Glyph yeah. ready, though. So they can block this. They probably won't even bother, honestly. Uh, he, he did like, what, 200 damage? A little bit oh, more XDD, block. caught out with the Fissure. Now mechs himself up. He's used it pretty early, but will end up going down here. The Viper Strike, the Hex. That gives XTT his opening. He blinks in, drops the first split. Focusing on S, he'll get the clap off on him. He'll throw another up in the air in the form of the Viper. Well, meanwhile, the TA's jumped in. Trap tries to finish off 5400. Can't quite get in range. Brew Force to retreat now. And another Cyclone. Yeah, now he'll run. Oh. Yeah, this this was a very good, like, important feature from p -Haw. Huh. That actually... Is Got the Aegis and got the Blue Speed off cooldown. I uh, got the Blue Speed to cooldown, so. And they didn't lose too much health on the towers, like, I think 400 HP off, off the tower, or 500. And they have Ravage now, and they probably should just try and take a tower with the Shaman Wards. Yeah, I'm with you here, Winter. It's it's a really nice hold from them. The only yeah, issue, was... the only question is if HTT can, like, do something with this timing window, because they didn't. Uh... They didn't do maybe, too much aside maybe from Maybe a tower. I, I guess they're not even going to try. They want to take a fight instead of taking a tower. XDD did lose Aegis, but he's up to another 3,200 gold. If he wants to just buy a Reaver, he's nearly got one. I, I feel he can actually go for a Salkiras. is better with the DP. And it's good versus the TA and the Viper So and the Shaman Wards. So I think Assault will actually give his team more. And he doesn't need more HP. More now. effective HP, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't need like the heart regen now. Like... Not too badly. He can maybe go for it later, but I think AC does more. And it also helps your it helps your death profit a lot. So mm -hmm. could definitely be a good choice. Yeah, even a blitz on a brew would be really awesome now for the BB. Yeah, actually, no more. He, he does have so he did go Sanji Ashes, so he's de decent health already. Yeah, he's very fast. Does a lot of damage, and he just needs like more damage on armor. Actually, we'll use exorcism, but this time. This time he's used it already when he's gotten yeah, to the base. Look, just look at the BB, he's really careful now not to get caught by the Fissure. Yeah, he doesn't have to go in too much. XC has the defensive yules, they've got the Brew Split to counter initiate. They really only have to put this Death Prophet on the front lines. Yeah. They'll try and Fissure off, but the Ghosts are still in rage to damage the tower. She'll eat a trap, Kaka looking for a Viper Strike. And they'll just back off. I mean, they're just gonna slow siege it, although Icy wants to prevent that. Yule Scepter oh, is available, that. they can glimpse one back if they need to, trapping two in Super's Kinetic Field. A CTP's wife, Fissure. Not gonna be guessed correctly. Shaman pushed in the bottom lane, but he did yeah, not get to she, the base. He dealt a lot of damage to the tower, like 700 damage to the tower. Okay, oh, he oh. actually dropped the wards. Yeah, he dropped the wards. Okay. Dude, like, I think it was a fairly good trade for them, considering the circumstances they had. And here's the lion. He has ultimate, or oh, shaker. He probably wants to kill the shaker. Our shaker is desperately trying to farm that blink. And if the, if this if this viper just walks a little bit farther away, then the I mean, is dead. If if he dies, even if he kills the oh shit, I think it's worth it. Blink? Yeah. Oh, he's not even go. gonna die. That's that's sad. Sad that shaker. <laughs> it just sucks to me that oh shaker. Yeah, that right sucks. Now. But yeah, it sucks for the oh shaker. He was like 1.2k, 1.3k. It's like guys, our next hope is my bling dagger, and that happens. And you're like, okay. Yeah, Urshaker is just one of those supports that if he doesn't have a good start, finding that space to farm is so damn difficult. Yeah, that's why I sometimes I, I even dislike to get arcane boots on Urshaker. I prefer to go for soaring plus tranquils, gives you a regen, a little bit of more armor, more movement speed, helps you get to certain areas faster so you can actually get more farm. Yeah, sometimes. and overall it lets you spam more than the arcane boots. So. Yeah, arcane boots is just a team item. Oh, here comes the Earth Shaker camping at the same spot, just waiting for someone to be overconfident. This time, they'll let the tower fall without really much of a fight. Glyph is still up, and they'll glimpse one. Back. Oh, is that someone who's trying to TP back? I didn't actually see the glimpse. 
Uh, just someone who's moving forward, I guess. Yeah, I didn't catch it as well. Here comes the Blinker clap, and now the brew jumps in. Onto Pretty Holly goes. That's Urshaker out of the picture. Well, they'll back. They'll try to keep him alive, focusing the fire panda. He'll actually survive through this, but they're still doing a lot of damage to the base. The glyph's already been forced out. Ghost will expire as they immediately shackle and then cancel that same shackle at XDD. Now with the Bruce split ending, the exorcism down. Lie gave me want to retreat, but once again, HGT just can't really punish it. I mean, the only thing they could... Well, no, yeah. Roche isn't even up yet. There's really nothing they could do, Winter. They gotta yeah, fight just, the next time. Like, they, they gotta fight play, sooner. They just play, this, play the situation without taking any risks. They just took, take a fight. It's like very classic Chinese team. They hit your buildings and they don't care about your heroes. If you want to fight, you come and fight us. We're not gonna jump in. Like, if you look at the, the heroes, like, everyone has team fight. That, that's what we talk about at the start of the game. Whoever commits first is at risk. Uh, the enemy counter-initiating with, with a better ultimate so no one wants to just put themselves in the situation where they are overextending and they get caught by a huge aoe spell meanwhile your bristleback did end up going for a reaver so it seems it with doesn't, that doesn't matter too much though yeah. i think it's still good for him just an xz is going like... for a heart as well it looks like picked up another vitality booster so we're gonna see double heart on these tanks Looking for a glimpse uh, of Kaka, they'll pull it back in, Static Storm's there, the follow-up can come from 5400, blinked it with a double damage root, he hexed the SMJ, no refraction up, but it'll BKB, 3 hero fissure, Ravage as well, but doesn't catch 5400, then the dunk, they'll kill off one in the Disruptor, Death Prophet, tossed up in the air, drop back down, not able to stay alive forever, XTT, no split, but they're still fighting through this with Great Impales, with the Bristleback auto attacks, HGT, losing the fight it seems, even with all of that team fight, and without the Bruce split, without the exorcism, they still get chased down. It's Bristle Boss in the house, chasing Icy out, auto attacking him, diving through four heroes, tanking everything with the heart, and only now does the Death Prophet arrive. She'll look to clean this one up. The SMJ back in, gets off a decent melt, does have a Desolator up as well, and well, the Bruce split's now cooled down. They'll use it on Kaka. XDD ended up surviving, they just couldn't bring down the raid boss. And he'll push into the base. They'll cycle in the Earth Shaker up in the air. Still no Blink Dagger available. HGT. They'll buy back on the Viper. They'll try and hold the line. But they're getting very close to losing that first lane of Rax. They gotta get some trades now. Roshi, stop talking about trades. Oh, there's the 8 minute respawn. So fast. That's like the minimum respawn. But they're chasing the bristle. They're I don't. Chasing him. I actually don't know if they can kill him. This is gonna take a really long time. He needs to silence the, the shaman. Yes, he got the silence of him. They he can turn chase. this. Oh, I see. You're dead. Static storm. He's trapped out. He can try to run, but the goo and the constant auto attacks. Look at the damage that XDD dishes out. He's heading for about 300 in auto attack with, already with before the minus on, armor. With, that was with anger smash on him. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at him. He's 503 move speed. DSOJ with a haste turn is barely managing to stay away from him. But they'll just walk into the pit. I don't know if they could have done that rush in the end, but chasing was definitely never going to happen. That was very ambitious. I mean, like you mentioned, they had to get something, right? <laughs> oh, that, that, that was just basically what they were trying to do, get something. CSMJ, after a great run from his team in the group stage, they started it off 5-0. They'll now give up the Aegis here. Is he oh, he has like no some, TP. He has no YOLO. TP. There was some YOLO play there. I just wanted to try and get the Aegis. That would be one thing if he had a TP, because he could just BKB TP out. But without it, it is extremely YOLO. And he is extremely dead. But oh, meanwhile, Shadow Shaman about bottom lane. Yeah. Forces out, forces out the TP back for the brew. The red Dota is strong with this one, but I'm not sure if it's strong enough. <laughs> They're not going to have to brew for the push, so he's already kind of done his job. Desperate times come desperate measures. And the tower's actually in deny range now. Shaman has managed to kill it off single-handedly. But Ligue and are focusing on actual racks, not just the tier 3 towers. They'll now rotate the brew towards mid, and they'll kill off the range racks here momentarily. Stacking up the goo on Kaka, the Viper's getting chased down by Bristleback. He's hitting for nearly 400 damage and auto attack. Not to mention he's got 16 armor, and yeah, GG. They're just, there's too much, too much beef on the front lines. Yes, they can't deal with it. Look, look at this! Him. It's like Super Saiyan Bristleback. Oh my god. It's, you know, it's so much fun if you're playing the Bristleback when you're so much ahead in this, in this type of game. Because like the enemy can't kill you and you're just running around in circles throwing kills and you're like, just no one can catch you. 
and you're just free to do whatever you want. And it'll be even more fun if you have a whiz on your team. Just imagine that. Yeah, that guy was... That was... Be, I don't even want to think about that, Winter. That, that's just gross. That's too tanky. Well, HGT, after a great start in the group stage, it looked like they were going to finish first place headed into the playoffs. That didn't end up being the case, so now... After losing their first best of three yesterday, they are one loss away from going home and not qualifying for the land finals for Starlight of Season 10 in Kiev. With that said, I'm Aldi. He's Winter. We're going to take a quick break here, guys. When we come back, Game 2, as Lie Gaming look to make it a 2 for nil sweep and HGT look to force a Game 3. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond the Summit. 